Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about uh, clinical trials and how specifically they're applied to testing uh, gene therapy treatments. So this is um, the current generation of gene transfer therapy using um, AAVs to deliver genes to uh, a person's body. And okay, so first uh, a few things about clinical trials. Um, and I'm going to be talking mostly specifically about how they're done uh, in the United States, um, just because that's what I'm most familiar with. There are, you know, some differences in other countries, but for the most part, uh, clinical trials, you know, tend to follow the per se, uh, same procedure everywhere. Okay, so uh, clinical trials um, have to do, you know, a couple things. Uh, if they're testing a, a new treatment, which isn't yet, you know, proven or been approved to be given to people. Uh, and that is they have to be shown to be safe and they have to be shown to be effective for whatever uh, disease or condition that they're intended to treat. Uh, now, uh, the FDA, which is a regulatory agency in the United States, does not actually oversee all clinical trials. Um, sometimes you can do a clinical trial where you're testing a drug which is already approved for one use, you know, to see if it would work in a different disease. Uh, now in that case, since the, the drug is already approved, um, the FDA doesn't really look into that. Um, it's common medical practice to sometimes prescribe drugs for what is called off-label uses, means for some indication different from what the uh, original approval was. So one example from in neuromuscular diseases is uh, the drug prednisone, which um, you know, has been approved for many years in the United States and was found to be helpful in uh, alleviating some, the progression of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. That wasn't what it was originally approved for, but that's now standard medical practice. That's a, a so-called off-label use, and that is actually the medical standard of care now for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, the time when the FDA gets involved in clinical trials is if it's a new treatment which you know, hasn't been tested or approved uh, for human use yet. Uh, typically, if um, someone thinks they have a new treatment, they will test it in animals, both to see whether um, you know, it helps the animal version of whatever disease that you're trying to develop it to treat, and also looking for safety. You know, is there any toxicity effects? Um, you know, how much can you, you know, give to whatever animals you're testing it in, in and, you know, then after you've done that testing, then um, the developer would go to the FDA with what's called an IND, Investigational New Drug Application, saying, hey, we want to test this um, experimental compound for this disease, and here's the data in animals which we think show that it might be effective and would be worth testing in people and that we think it would be safe. And if the FDA agrees with that, then um, a clinical trial can begin. Now, for most drugs, traditionally, you do a trial just of safety. You give a low dose that isn't really going to actually, you know, improve a person. Um, often you do it in healthy people, you know, who don't even have whatever disease uh, you're trying to treat, just to make sure that they're, you know, they suffer no ill effects. Um, that doesn't really work in gene therapy for a couple of reasons. One. Um, 
in uh, a healthy person would never need to have a new gene transferred into their bodies. So there's kind of some safety and ethical issues with that. Uh, in addition, because um, the AAV, which is used to deliver the gene, is a virus, it sets off the person's immune system, which means that once you've treated a person with an AAV once, uh, their immune system is now primed to it, and basically you've inoculated, you can't treat them again as it stands right now. Okay, so what do they do about that? Well, in, a fir in some of the first gene therapy trials, they just you know, gave a person an injection in you know, one muscle in their arm or foot, um, depending on the trial, just to see whether it was safe, um, and it was. Um, and I know some of the people who um, gave that, so basically they took one for the team, and as a result, as it stands right now, aren't able to take the gene therapy again, even if it is developed and is shown to be you know, successfully able to uh, treat a person with uh, a neuromuscular disease. Um, now that there's an adequate safety, you know, um, you know, history of, you know, safe use in clinical trials uh, um, established, they don't really do that anymore. Uh, then the next thing that they did was to, you know, just isolate one limb, you know, put a tourniquet on, you know, one leg, uh, inject that and inject the AAV into a person's leg um, or sometimes both legs, um, you know, leave it there for half an hour, say, take the tourniquet off, you know, let the, you know, circulation be restored, um, you know, thinking that that would minimize the risk because it wouldn't, the, the treat AAV wouldn't get so much to the rest of their body. Well, it turns out, um, one, that was unnecessary. First, the AAV did get to the rest of their body, just not very effectively, so most of their muscles didn't really benefit other than the you know, one or two limbs that they were being treated in. Uh, the other thing is that um, you know, the safety had no major issues, so it wasn't really necessary. So now they're just, you know, going to injecting a person uh, uh, in, you know, in their bloodstream so that their entire body will uh, be exposed to the AAV and uh, it can potentially get to, you know, all of their muscles. Okay, so one, uh, well, there can still be some uh, side effects, so I'll, you know, go into, you know, some of the, the safety issues that, you know, have been seen in uh, clinical trials for gene therapy in a later video. But, you know, for the, the time being, um, one of the things to know is that the amount of virus that's injected into a person in uh, these gene therapy trials is a really large amount. It's um, typically about 10 to the 14th. So that's um, using the American system of units. If you're British, then you'll realize that this doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, about 100 trillion virus particles for every kilogram of body weight. Um, that's a very large number. A person who actually, you know, caught a virus would never have that much in their in their body, and you know. So later, I'll go in in a subsequent video into some of the um, ways that they, um, you know, suppress the immune system temporarily so that that can be done safely. Okay, so. 
if you, you know, treat a few people and then typically you say, you know, establish, you know, what a safe dose would be, you know, can you give them enough so that they're actually able to express the new gene that you've given them without um, suffering ill effects? Um, and, you know, is that enough to actually, uh, you know, improve their function or their systems? or their, their symptoms. So what you want, okay, then what you need to do is, you know, establish efficacy, um, you know, with appropriate statistics. Most of the time that's done with what's called a blinded clinical trial. So you say would have um, currently in a blinded trial that's happening right now for gene therapy in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there are 40 patients in the trial, 20 of them are receiving the treatment, 20 of them are receiving a placebo. So, you know, they're just being injected with saline or something, you know, no, no virus um, and, you know, no gene is being transferred. Um, Neither the patients, nor their families, nor the people treating them or examining them know who is in which group. So nobody knows what, uh, who got the real treatment and who got the placebo. Um, that's to guard against what's called the uh, placebo effect, that if someone gets a treatment that they think, you know, might help their disease, um, a lot of times just the psychological effect with that might appear to make them get better. Uh, the people testing a treatment that they've developed really want it to work, so they're not necessarily uh, an objective observer, so that's why you do it this way. Uh, now, a couple of, of issues. Um, in something as transformative as gene therapy, um, Mathematically, you want a, you know, 50-50 ratio of people in the treatment group versus the placebo group. The, the statistics work out better that way. Um, for a patient in the trial, nobody wants to be in the placebo group. So one way to get around that is to um, say, okay, if we, if the treatment looks like it's working at the end of the trial, uh, we'll go back and give everyone who got the placebo at the beginning uh, the real treatment at the end. So, you know, they, they will, everyone will get the treatment, it just may, may mean that they have to wait a year or so. Um, now, not all tests of gene therapy, even, you know, the, even ones that are uh, that, you know, the pr approval is based on um, actually involve a placebo group. One example is the gene therapy for um, spinal muscular atrophy type 1. And this has, um, you know, a very severe phenotype. Um, you know, its onset of weakness is during infancy. It basically caused you know, your motor neurons, uh, which control your muscles, to die uh, because they don't have a gene that's necessary for them to survive. Um, and so basically people, you know, only live to the age of about two or are only able to breathe independently uh, without respirator assistance uh, until the age of two. So for something like that, um, you know, when they treated people, um, the people, these people, you know, um, in some cases are, you know, walking, talking, or at least can stand up, sit up, um, you know, uh, several years later. Um, that's so completely outside the natural history of this disease that, you know, really, you know, and the, and the children are too young to even know what's going on. So that can't be a placebo effect. And also, uh, if, you know, given that people, you know, who don't 
have the treatment, would have a very poor prognosis, it wouldn't really be ethically acceptable, um, you know, to just, you know, not treat, you know, give people a placebo and watch them go down hill for a year and, you know, with irreversible damage to their nervous system. So um, the, the gene therapy for spinal muscular atrophy, which I talked about earlier, was done without any placebo group. So it's really, uh, you know, a choice of how dramatic is the effect going to be? Is it something that, you know, you might need a blinded trial to really be able to, you know, distinguish between a real effect and a placebo effect? Uh, you know, and are there ethical considerations that, you know, it wouldn't be ethical uh, to do a trial um, with a placebo group. So um, there's a lot more to say about um, clinical trials, and I'll be uh, talking about that in upcoming videos. Uh, meanwhile, hope you're um, having a, a great uh, week or weekend uh, wherever you are.